All right, so we're gonna get started here and do a, a front shoulder off this deer. And uh, before we get started, just another tip that I would share is, you know, in the process of, of dealing with game in the field and getting it home, invariably you're probably gonna get some hair on the meat. Uh, go to great lengths to keep hair off the meat, but every now and then it happens. And uh, I found a dry paper towel uh, works really well at removing any stray hairs that may be stuck to the uh, to the meat. And so before I get started, I like to do a quick kind of run through with a dry paper towel. Make sure that I've picked off any hairs that were left behind. And that way I'm not going to be serving those hairs to my friends and family. All right, so with that out of the way, uh, the front shoulder is really all I do with the front shoulder, especially on a deer, is I trim this up for grind with the exception of the shank, which I will keep whole and uh, you can slow cook that just like with the hind quarter shanks and it, and it turns out really well. All the soft tissue or the connective tissue in here will cook down and uh, it, it really is wonderful that way. So you can trim this all out. It's a lot of work, I've done it, especially on elk. Um, but for, for my purposes, this is essentially burger meat uh, and or jerky meat or sausage meat. And I'm gonna show you kind of how I approach it. Now the shoulder floats on the side of the carcass. So there's not a, uh, there's not a bone holding this together like on a, a hind quarter where you'll have a femur and a hip socket situation. So uh, when you go to cut this off uh, an animal, you're simply cutting this away from the rib cage and uh, it's free floating at that point. So that's all I've done here. And then I put it in a game bag and aged it for a week. Um, and here we go. So what I like to do is the shoulder is very complex. There's lots of layering lots of small muscle groups, and you can see just the, the various direction of, of the way this uh, lays out. There's muscles going every which way. So the name of the game here, much like with the hindquarter, is to separate all these different muscle groups and start basically di dissecting this puzzle that is the shoulder blade. And so you can take your knife and work it work it along these seams and open these things up there's really no right or wrong way to do it i find that if i keep these muscles intact that it makes it much easier in the trimming of this meat because once you start cutting across all of these muscle groups now you're exposing all of the connective tissue between them in a way that makes it much dif more difficult to trim trim them later. So by opening this up and keeping this whole, it makes it much easier. So I kind of go along here just as if I was tracing this out. And again, there's no there's no rhyme or reason to this other than trying to remove these muscles from the bone structure. And so I use the tip of my knife. Again, a nice semi-flexible boning knife works best for this. Um, and this is a lot less, uh, I guess, precise than if you were doing this on a hindquarter because what you're doing here is there's so many different muscles and pieces to, to a front shoulder that uh, you just kind of have to have to work on each one at, one at a time. So what I'm doing here is on the shoulder blade, as you'll see once I fillet this off, there are two kind of main pieces of meat that you can get off a of front shoulder. And on an elk, these are quite nice and large. So the heavy, heavy tendon that connects this lower uh, portion of that, you can just kind of slice that right off the bone and just work that right off like that 
So I'm going to leave that there for now, peel that back, and we'll get to this in a little bit, but there's actually another layer of connective tissue in there that we'll need to get out. And work on the other side of this ridge bone. And this is where that uh, flexible knife is really important because you basically got to kind of scoop this off in order to save as much of that meat as possible. Um, and you can also clean it up afterwards. Add that to your burger pile. So you can see now what I've got is pulling these off. That little guy will get cleaned up. I've exposed this blade. You can see how this thing is oriented. There's this big vertical ridge bone. And this is again why with your shot placement it's really key that you don't hit that shoulder blade. There's one area right here that you can get through with a broadhead if you've got enough uh, kinetic energy and a heavy enough arrow. But that's still not a good shot. The spine lays right behind here. Uh, you want to aim for this pocket right here. This front leg bone is quite heavy. People think of front shoulders on deer as not being uh, very, very much of a, I guess, an, an impasse to, a, to an arrow. But this front leg bone, this lower leg bone, you can just see how large that bone is. That's a big heavy bone. You don't want to hit that. So your shot placement, if you're aiming in the center of that, kind of that triangle that's formed there, you're going to have your best margin of error of getting lungs. So again, I'm just kind of working all this off uh, using the tip of the knife, letting the knife do that work. Good sharp knife is key for this. I'm going to flip it over now. The back of the blade has a thin layer of muscle as well. And you'll notice at the very top of the shoulder blade is actually cartilage. There's a cartilage flap at the top. So this is that stuff I was showing in my other video, all this bubbly membrane. If you take a paper towel, it sticks to that like glue. You can lift and uh, you can separate all of that pretty quickly. Get that all out of your way. In here we're just flaying this off let that knife blade follow that curve of that blade all of this little trim can be added to your burger pile. socket. There's a big ball socket here. That blade connects to the leg bone, the upper leg bone. See that there? Now you can, nothing says you can't save all these bones and do bone broth. You, make, you can boil them down and make a nice stock if nothing else. Um, typically uh, with the front shoulder you're gonna have a lot of a lot of little meat trimming to do because the complexity of the bones and the way things lay out, it's really hard, for example, up in here to get all of that out. But if you come back in, you can 
spend a little time picking this over, getting as much off it as possible. And uh, just add that to your burger pile. All right. So then you've got in here, you got the front leg bone. You can start to work some of this back and open that up. Get right down to that bone and just work your knife right around it. Probably a little tedious to watch but some of this stuff you kind of have to just do it or maybe watch it done and then give it a try um, but again you're not too concerned here about violating um, you know muscle groups and things like that other than the convenience of trimming because all of this all of this meat is going to go right into my my grind so it will take probably take me another hour to go through and trim all this up. All this meat that I'm pulling off of here will get trimmed up into nice clean burger grind. But right now all I'm trying to do obviously is get it off the bone. So, as I said earlier, there's, there's two roasts that kind of come off a shoulder blade, and this, on an elk, this is a, a pretty nice hunk of meat, quite frankly. On a deer, it goes into my grind pile, but just for demonstration purposes, on an elk, you know, this is going to be a big old slab, and, uh, Right in the middle, you see the another tendon layer or a silver skin layer poking out right here. Um, you got to separate that out because right in the center of this, there's another layer. I'm not going to do it because uh, I'm just going to grind all this, and that that won't affect my grind too much because I'll get the end, the thick end out on this side, but I'm not going to worry about where it tapers out because on a deer it's pretty thin doesn't have any effect on my burger so big old hair so yeah all this will just get trimmed up working down here into this lower leg what I do with the the, front, the lower front leg is it's got this big ball at the top I cut that off I work this off, I work the socket out here, and then uh, cut off the lo the lower couple inches of this leg bone so that uh, it's much smaller and it fits in a crock crock pot easily. Okay. Like I said, I'll take and saw that off right there. Cut that lower piece off, and you've got a nice shank right there ready to go for the crock pot. So there it is. It's your front shoulder broken down. And then all I'm going to do here is trim this up for burger. See that layer of tendon right there, the silver skin. You can take that out. Also come in here and follow it right on up. Like that. Show you 
Take that off. Come in here. Just like that. As I mentioned before, when you're cutting up burger meat, you know, as much care as you put into it, you're going to get out of it. So if you don't put a lot of effort and time into trimming off some of the tough stuff and the silver skin, some of the tissues, connective tissues, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be grinding that up. And a lot of this little stuff, like I said, doesn't make any difference, but if you're running you're running this big boy through your grinder, you're going to have problems and you're not going to have very good end product as far as the tenderness of that meat and it's going to be really chewy and you just don't want that. So the more, the more you put into this part of the process, the better off you're going to be in the end. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, front shoulders are more complicated. They're a little more complex the way they lay out. Um, in my mind, they just take a little bit more time and attention to, to extract as much of the meat off as, as you can get. Um, there's a lot of trimming involved, and uh, but it's worth it. You know, it's good meat. It's all great for grinding, it's great for jerky, great for sausage, um, and what I do is basically I'll come in here, take off, and I try to keep these muscles somewhat intact so that I'm not fighting all these little seams or little starts and stops of different tendons and things. Um, come in here separate these out into the smaller muscles and then then you're only trimming you know this side and then this side everything in the middle should be nice red meat you may have another thin layer of silver skin in there somewhere especially as you get into the lower the lower parts where you get these multiple layers but uh, by and large it makes it much easier if you don't cut through all of this then you're dealing with all these individuals separately. So there you go. Hopefully that helps. Um, again, not difficult, just time consuming. And uh, follow the bones. Get yourself a flexible boning knife. Keep it sharp and you're on your way. Thanks for watching.